The Victorian attitude to crime and punishment was harsh by standards today. If you committed a serious felony, you could be sentenced to hard labour, transportation abroad, or even capital punishment. But as the century progressed, it was increasingly likely that you would be sent to prison for most offences. The most common crime in the 19th century was theft. Which is no small wonder, given that cities had become huge centres of industry and commerce, with all manner of goods stored in warehouses, particularly London. It is unsurprising that pickpocketing, theft of food and clothing, was rife, given the rapid increase in population, high rent costs imposed by unscrupulous landlords, as well as the likelihood of finding yourself on the street, should you lose your job. What is perhaps surprising is the harsh sentences passed on those convicted of such crimes, people who were not inherently bad, but fell victim to desperate circumstances, even those who were hungry and homeless. And you will know from my video about poor law that to find yourself down and out in the Victorian era only meant falling foul of the Vagrancy Act, and yet more punishment. To a foreigner visiting London, such severe legal sanctions must have seemed wholly excessive compared to the severity of the crimes themselves. This is the puzzle that our commentator discusses in this video. Jack London was an American journalist and social activist who, disguised in working-class clothes, travelled around the East End of London at the turn of the 20th century to understand the struggles of everyday people for himself. He grappled with the disparity, as he sees it, of comparatively draconian sentencing for crimes to property compared to crimes to the person. And you will hear a range of cases he highlights from police courts to illustrate his point. Historically, rich landowners, many of whom were also ministers of parliament and also lawmakers, were concerned with defending their property and wealth from the poor, and the courts protected their interests. But stricter sentencing of minor crimes, later in the Victorian era, reflected efforts by authority to control lawlessness. Whether fair retribution or not, prison was thought to restore moral character and deter future transgressions. If fines couldn't be paid, for if you were poor and couldn't afford such cost, prison awaited. The cases you will hear are, of course, from just one week of records and of London's own choosing, and so not necessarily an accurate representation of sentencing in the capital or the country as a whole. Let me know in the comments section if you agree with Jack London, and if you believe that the punishments to which these people were sentenced fit the crimes. Before we move on, please consider clicking the subscribe button for more content like this. If you find this video interesting, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and share it widely with friends and family. Please check out the description to see how you can support the channel and the content we make. In a civilization frankly materialistic and based upon property, not soul, it is inevitable that property shall be exalted over soul that crimes against property shall be considered far more serious than crimes against the person. To pound one's wife to a jelly and break a few of her ribs is a trivial offence compared with sleeping out under the naked stars because one has not the price of a doss. The lad who steals a few pears from a wealthy railway corporation is a greater menace to society than the young brute who commits an unprovoked assault upon an old man over seventy years of age, while the young girl who takes a lodging under the pretense that she has work commits so dangerous an offence that, were she not severely punished, she and her kind might bring the whole fabric of property clattering to the ground. Had she unholy tramped Piccadilly and the Strand after midnight, the police would not have interfered with her and she would have been able to pay for her lodging. The following illustrative cases are culled from the police court reports of a single week. Witness Police Court, before Alderman Gossage and Neil, 
Thomas Lynch, charged with being drunk and disorderly and with assaulting a constable. Defendant rescued a woman from custody, kicked the constable, and threw stones at him. Fined three shillings sixpence for the first offence, and ten shillings and costs for the assault. Glasgow Queen's Park Police Court, before Bailey Norman Thompson. John Kane pleaded guilty to assaulting his wife. There were five previous convictions. Fined two pounds, two shillings. Taunton County Petty Sessions, John Painter, a big, burly fellow described as a labourer, charged with assaulting his wife. The woman received two severe black eyes, and her face was badly swollen. Fined one pound, eight shillings, including costs, and bound over to keep the peace. Witness Police Court, Richard Bestwick and George Hunt, charged with trespassing in search of game. Hunt fined one pound and costs, Bestwick two pounds and costs, in default one month. Shaftesbury Police Court, before the Mayor, Mr. A. T. Carpenter, Thomas Baker, charged with sleeping out, fourteen days. Doncaster Borough Police Court, before Alderman Clark and other magistrates, James M. Gowan, charged under the Poaching Prevention Act, with being found in possession of poaching implements and a number of rabbits, fined two pounds and costs, or one month. Dumfermline Sheriff Court, before Sheriff Gillespie, John Young, a pithead worker, pleaded guilty to assaulting Alexander Storar by beating him about the head and body with his fists, throwing him on the ground, and also striking him with a pit prop. Find one pound. Kirkcaldy Police Court, before Bailey Dishart, Simon Walker pleaded guilty to assaulting a man by striking and knocking him down. It was an unprovoked assault, and the magistrate described the accused as a perfect danger to the community. Fined. Thirty shillings. Mansfield Police Court. Before the Mayor. Messrs. F. J. Turner, J. Whittaker, F. Tidsbury, E. Holmes, and Dr. Orr Nesbitt. Joseph Jackson, charged with assaulting Charles Nunn. Without any provocation, defendant struck the complainant a violent blow in the face, knocking him down, and then kicked him on the side of the head. He was rendered unconscious, and he remained under medical treatment for a fortnight. Fined twenty-one shillings. Perth Sheriff Court, before Sheriff Sim. David Mitchell, charged with poaching. There were two previous convictions, the last being three years ago. The sheriff was asked to deal leniently with Mitchell, who was sixty-two years of age, and who offered no resistance to the gamekeeper. Four months. Dundee Sheriff Court, before Honourable Sheriff Substitute R.C. Walker, John Murray, Donald Craig, and James Parks, charged with poaching. Craig and Parks fined one pound each, or fourteen days. Murray, five pounds. Or one month. Reddingborough Police Court, before Messrs. W. B. Monk, F. B. Parfit, H. M. Wallace, and G. Gilligan. Alfred Masters, aged sixteen, charged with sleeping out on a waste piece of ground and having no visible means of subsistence. Seven days. Salisbury City Petty Sessions, before the Mayor, Messrs. C. Hoskins, G. Fulford, E. Alexander and W. Marlowe. James Moore, charged with stealing a pair of boots from outside a shop. Twenty-one days. Horncastle Police Court, before the Reverend W. P. Massingbird, the Reverend J. Graham, and Mr. N. Lucas Calcraft. George Brackenbury, a young labourer, convicted of what the magistrates characterised as an altogether unprovoked and brutal assault upon James Sergeant Foster, a man over seventy years of age. Fined one pound, five shillings, and sixpence costs. Worksop Petty Sessions, before Messrs. F. J. S. Fulgham, or Edison, and S. Smith. John Priestley, 
charged with assaulting the Reverend Leslie Graham. Defendant, who was drunk, was wheeling a perambulator and pushed it in front of a lorry, with the result that the perambulator was overturned and the baby in it thrown out. The lorry passed over the perambulator, but the baby was uninjured. Defendant then attacked the driver of the lorry, and afterwards assaulted the complainant, who remonstrated with him upon his conduct. In consequence of the injuries defendant inflicted, complainant had to consult a doctor. Fined forty shillings and costs. Rotherham West Riding Police Court, before Messrs. C. Wright and G. Pugh, and Colonel Stoddart, Benjamin Storey, Thomas Brammer, and Samuel Wilcock, charged with poaching. One month each. Southampton County Police Court, before Admiral J. C. Rowley, Mr. H. H. Conn Seymour, and other magistrates. Henry Torrington, charged with sleeping at seven days. Eckington Police Court, before Major L. B. Bowden, Messrs. Orr Eyre, and H. A. Fowler, and Dr. Court, Joseph Watts, charged with stealing nine ferns from a garden. One month. Ripley Petty Sessions, before Messrs. J. B. Wheeler, W. D. Bembridge, and M. Hooper, Vincent Allen, and George Hall, charged under the Poaching Prevention Act, with being found in possession of a number of rabbits, and John Sparham, charged with aiding and abetting them. Hall and Sparham fined one pound, seventeen shillings, and four pence, and Allen, two pounds, seventeen shillings, and four pence, including costs, the former committed for fourteen days, and the latter for one month in default of payment. South Western Police Court, London, before Mr. Rose, John Probin, charged with doing grievous bodily harm to a constable. Prisoner had been kicking his wife, and also assaulting another woman who protested against his brutality. The constable tried to persuade him to go inside his house, but prisoner suddenly turned upon him, knocking him down by a blow on the face, kicking him as he lay on the ground, and attempting to strangle him. Finally, the prisoner deliberately kicked the officer in a dangerous part, inflicting an injury which will keep him off duty for a long time to come. Six Weeks Lambeth Police Court, London, before Mr. Hopkins. Baby Stuart, aged 19, described as a chorus girl, charged with obtaining food and lodging to the value of five shillings, by false pretenses, and with intent to defraud Emma Brazier, the complainant, lodging house keeper of Atwell Road. Prisoner took apartments at her house on the representation that she was employed at the Crown Theatre. After prisoner had been in her house two or three days, Mrs. Brazier made inquiries, and, finding the girl's story untrue, gave her into custody. Prisoner told the magistrate that she would have worked had she not had such bad health. Six weeks, hard labour.